Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be on delamination repair. I had a camper for a client. It was a 2010 Coleman hybrid camper and I had some pretty significant delamination to the front and to the side of the camper. Um, so I went ahead and repaired that and I've got a lot of footage that I put together for you guys. So if you have any type of delamination on your fiberglass, this is going to be the video for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey y'all, Heather with Fallen Into Camping here. Um, we're going to be talking about repairing RV delamination and there's a lot of information here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I kind of like to break water damage down into six stages. Um, this is going to be about the same. I've broken it down into six stages of delamination repair. So the first stage is going to be remove all your exterior trim pieces. Then you're going to examine to see how far in your delamination goes. You are also going to scrape any of the excess rotten wood off, and that's kind of tricky um, just because the tight spaces, but just get as much off as you can. You're going to replace the backing of the fiberglass if you need to. Um, next is epoxy. I use epoxy, highly recommend it. I'll, I'll have links later in the presentation. Um, and then you're going to need clamps, lots of clamps, and I'll tell you what types of clamps you're going to need. Okay, so here is some basic delamination repair materials. You're going to need um, eighth inch paneling if your delamination has rotted away basically the inside of the fiberglass. So you have a fiberglass shell, but then attached to the fiberglass shell, there is eighth inch paneling. So if that has worn away, then that's gonna need to be something that has to be replaced. Um, you're also going to need these deep throat clamps. Um, and I have a link on my Amazon storefront on these, but I buy them at Harbor Freight for about half the price that is on Amazon. Um, you will need maybe six of these, so highly recommend these 12 inch deep throat clamps. You will also need the West Systems Epoxy, um, which is also on my Amazon storefront, along with some 60 milliliter syringes and some tubing for the syringes. So all of that is linked in my Amazon storefront, which I will put in um, the description of this video. So I've broken this down into front and side delamination. So if you're not worried about the front, you're just worried about the side, then you can kind of skip past this point. Um, but if you have front delamination, most of the time it's going to require the front fiberglass to be removed. If it's extensive, you can spot epoxy it if it's a small area, which is basically going to be the same process as the side that I did. Um, so if you don't have extensive damage on the front of your camper, then you can kind of skip ahead to the side method and kind of just interchange them. Um, so with the front of the camper, if you can see, let me show you, I'll circle it right here. So this right here and then this right here, um, that framing was actually wood. So I had to reframe the top and the bottom of the camper, even though it's aluminum framed, um, I still needed to reconfigure that because the wood that was holding it there had rotted away. Uh, you're also gonna wanna keep track of the electrical for the running lights. In this case, there was a light right here, oops, right here. Not again. Okay, right there. There was a light right there. Um, and then there's also a light on this side right there. So just keep track of all the lights um, and take lots of pictures along the way so you know how it goes back. So the first step to actually repairing your front delamination is to go ahead and remove all of the trim pieces on your camper. Um, that includes the side rails. Let me get my pen. Um, the side rails right there. You're also going to remove all of the front strips, the top, and there's one on the bottom. And then you're also going to remove the diamond plate if you have it. Um, now this was a hybrid, so as you can see, there's a, a window right here that I also removed later on. But just start with the small trim pieces and then you can go from there. Okay. 
So like I had mentioned before, this camper was actually a hybrid, so I had to take the bed out in order to take the front part off. So I took all the screws out of there, um, and this is the cool part is <laughs> after you have everything off, there was actually so much water damage on this camper that with a little bit of working with a scraper, the whole thing kind of just came off. So as you can see, let me get my pin here. Um, basically, it was supposed to be glued on all of these little spaces where you see the cardboard has stayed on. It was supposed to be glued on there, but the water damage was so extensive that it basically just crumbled because it was made out of MDF. And if anybody knows about MDF, then once it gets wet, you know, kind of just soaks up all the water. So, um, you know, I, I, I made the right decision taking it off and if you have extensive water damage then I highly recommend taking it off and rebuilding it. So this was basically just to kind of show you a slower angle of how flexible that uh, fiberglass is. So when you take it off just be really careful with it because you know, the, the backing to this pretty much disintegrated away. So all it was was a fiberglass shell and that might happen to you too. So just be really careful. Highly recommend having two people help you with this. It was a little difficult by myself, um, but I'm pretty good at finding ways to um, do things by myself. So if you have a second person to help you, that would definitely be more helpful. Okay, so your next step, once you have your fiberglass off, um, you're just going to start scraping away all of the excess backing that's on it. So they actually make this, um, and it's fiberglass, but it is epoxy to a panel. So it's actually two separate panels. Um, and you're basically just going to scrape all of it away. Get as much of it off as you can because you want your fiberglass to be even. Uh, so as you can see, once you kind of work up at an area, it starts to peel away pretty good. So just work on that. Um, and then I took a sander to it just to kind of smooth out any of the imperfections or anything that I really couldn't get off. Um, definitely wear a mask when you do this because you don't want to be breathing in any fiberglass just in case. Um, my next step is I mixed my epoxy and then I got a brush and just started brushing it on the panels. These are the eighth inch paneling that I told you guys about. Um, I mixed it in small batches first. So as you can see, I did one side and then went back, got more epoxy and then did the other side. After that, I laid my fiberglass over it and I just started loading it up with weights. And I think I let this sit there overnight before I started messing with it. Um, I also did the sides, as you can see right there. Um, so I kind of just peeled the fiberglass back a little bit and put more epoxy on the panel. And as you can see, I actually epoxied a little bit of the top. Don't do all of the top because it was a really hard curve. I figured I would have a hard time making it bend and I was right. So don't epoxy all of the top of it, just a little portion. Um, after that, I went ahead, I think I let it sit overnight, and then I cut the excess paneling off of it. Um, I didn't, I, I was going to use the router, but I decided against it um, because I wanted to be able to line up the inside frame. And this right here, what I did was that was the joint where my two panels were. So I got just little scraps of wood and I clamped them together to give that joint a little more stability. Um, if you had two people, it wouldn't have been as big of an issue, but I didn't want that to be a breaking point when I lifted this whole thing up by myself. So I would still recommend doing that just to be on the safe side. You don't want to crack your fiberglass or crack it in half or anything else like that. Um, but that was a weak point where my two panels joined together so I just thought I'd be on the safe side and I'm glad I did because it was a little bit of a mess to try to get up there by myself. Okay and I want to tell you that this video makes it look very graceful when I put this up there but I assure you it was not as graceful as the video looks. Um, it was a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. 
so I picked it up I slid it up there and once I had it up there I actually took my clamps off let me circle it right here my clamps that are right here I actually took those off once it was up there and I placed them down here and I clamped the fiberglass to the aluminum frame and then I positioned it in the correct position. So I lined this bottom piece right here. I lined the bottom piece of the fiberglass up at the bottom piece of the frame and then everything else just kind of fell into place. So after I lined it up and I had it clamped, I went ahead and got some screws um, and I screwed in the fiberglass to the aluminum frame. Now, as you can tell, um, the top part was a little trickier than I thought it was going to be. So I actually started with the bottom first. Um, and what I did was I screwed the bottom in because I don't know if you guys remember from when I took it apart, but it had diamond plate on it. And so where that diamond plate was, I actually, um, I knew where the top part of the diamond plate was. And so I basically took screws and screwed it into the frame that I had made. Um, and pretty much made the curve all the way down. Now it was a little different with up top because the curve up top was a lot, um, I guess steeper, if that's what you wanna call it. So I started with getting some epoxy and I epoxied a little further up just to where um, the bend of that curve was. So I think my epoxy probably goes up to a right there somewhere. And if you notice, the curve goes all the way up there. So I didn't epoxy the whole curve. So I just started out with maybe half of the curve. And um, after I got that set and it was, um, I think I let it dry for maybe six hours, I came up to the roof and let me see, get my pointer here. Uh, basically what I did was same thing on the bottom. It was just a little harder to do. I took all the screws and one at a time I screwed it in and kind of bent the plywood up um, until it reached the top point, let me get my pointer again, the top point right here. So um, you see all these screws, one screw, one screw, one screw, one screw. I basically did it in a bunch of sections. And if I do one screw here, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do another one here. I'm gonna do another one here and then so on and make my way all the way down the camper. And then when I come to this next screw right here, I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna go right here, and then I'm gonna continue to move this way all the way until my piece is basically bending the way I want it to bend. Um, and I did that underneath the fiberglass. That way I wouldn't be screwing into the actual fiberglass and I could epoxy the fiberglass to the piece of wood that was already there. So it made it waterproof. Um, I'm sure there's probably a better way to do it, but I made a bunch of jigs and it wasn't really bending the way I wanted it to bend and I didn't want to break the wood. I just wanted it to bend. So this was the best way that I figured out how to make it bend without putting any more stress on. So once you have all of the epoxy out the way um, and your face is screwed back onto the aluminum frame, you can start putting everything back together. Um, definitely play this video for you. Replace all the butyl tape, all of it. This one had foam um, kind of weather stripping on it. So take all of that off and apply new butyl tape. Uh, you can buy butyl tape through Rec Pro. That's where I buy it from. I also have that linked in my Amazon um, storefront. So if you don't know anything about butyl tape, go check it out. It's a great seal. Um, and just replace it on anything that you take off. Put new, fresh butyl tape on it. Don't try to reuse the old seals that were there.
And as I had mentioned before, I find really interesting ways to do things by myself and putting the uh, window back in the camper or the front part was really no exception. So basically just put everything back together. Um, my screws for the bottom are hidden under this diamond plate right here. So you can't see that, which is great. Um, I oops, put a little extra caulking in there just to make myself feel better on top of the screws before I put the diamond plate in. Um, and that is pretty much all there is to the front. All right, now we can go ahead and talk about side delamination. Um, this can be fixed using epoxy, some tubing, syringes, and plastic trim. And I'll talk more about that later. Um, you will also need lots of clamps and lots of scrap wood. And you will see uh, in the pictures that I have really just how much wood and clamps you will need. Um, use any and all holes you have to basically have clamping positions. Um, so as you can see, you know, there's a, a little wind or a storage compartment right there. That's a great clamping position. There's a window. That's a great clamping position. So anything on the outside of the camper that you have like that will need to be removed so you can have clamping space. So this camper actually had some really uh, significant damage. The wood that uh, was epoxied originally to the fiberglass shell was completely rotten. Uh, so what I did was I, you know, took the, basically <laughs> took the fiberglass off, scraped it away as much as I could um, and went from there. So obviously we will start with you know, taking off all the trim, um, all that stuff, basically everything that I said in the front delamination video, you're going to start with that, take all your trim pieces off, you know, examine how far in your delamination goes, scrape all the excess wood off. Now, once you've got to that point, you can go ahead and get a new panel if you need to. If your delamination isn't that bad, it's just bubbling a little bit, I wouldn't worry about replacing it, but this one was basically from the top of the camper all the way to the bottom. So that's the only reason that I did it. But if you have little spots here and there, I honestly would not worry about replacing the backing of it. I would just skip straight to the epoxy part. So, you know, it's kind of a weird shape. And so basically what I did is I got a whole four by eight panel and I stuck it in the side of the camper um, and then basically just started going from there. That way I knew I would have the right shape. I knew I wouldn't come up short on my measurements. As you can see, I have some blocks of wood right here to kind of level it and it goes all the way up to basically the roof. So that was the easiest way that I found to make sure that I knew I had the right size panel and that nothing was going to be all cattywampus once I started epoxying it. So once I had uh, that panel in, basically what I did was took some spray adhesive and I attached the panel to the camper wall itself. So you basically will have three layers. You will have the fiberglass on the outside, you will have the wood in the middle, and then you'll have the foam on the inside of the camper. So I attached the wood to the foam first. So don't worry about the fiberglass until you have the wood attached to the foam. I use Gorilla Spray Adhesive. Also have that linked in my Amazon storefront. So check that out. They sell it pretty much anywhere. Um, but I figured I'd just put it there as a good reference point. So once I did that, you see all of these clamps that I have used with lots of scraps of wood. Um, as you can tell, I took the window out, so that's a good clamping point for me. There's also a clamp down here. Um, so just basically clamp it wherever you can. Put a piece of wood on both sides of your clamp. That way you don't damage your wall and you don't damage the fiberglass on the outside of the camper. So start with that. Um, and then after that, I got um, a uh, jigsaw and I kind of just trimmed the piece right there. That way it wasn't, you know, sticking out in my face. That's really the only reason I did it. I was tired of running into it. <laughs> Once that is nice and dry, uh, let me move my thing here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, you can go ahead and trim the excess uh, paneling off of the bottom just like that. I use my jigsaw just the same way as I did with the side of the panel.
Now, once you've kind of trimmed everything up, um, I actually went with my jigsaw and got a closer trim. Uh, I just did that just to I, I just give me some good reference point as to where my epoxy needed to end. Um, so that's a step that you can do after your epoxy, but I chose to do it before just so when I epoxy everything, if I have extra kind of mess, then my wood won't actually stick to uh, the paneling right there that's on the edge. So don't learn from, learn from my mistake because I may have done that once. <laughs> Okay, now you are ready to start with um, the epoxy. So this is where that 16 gauge nailer comes in handy. This just made me feel a little better. Um, I nailed the panel to the aluminum frame. Um, that just in case, I, I don't know, I don't think the glue would ever come off, but it just makes me feel a little better to have a little extra step of safety. So that is an optional step for you, but I would highly recommend it. Um, I have that 16 gauge nailer and one inch nails also linked in my Amazon storefront. Now here comes the fun part. Uh, this is super messy with the epoxy, so I highly recommend putting something down on the floor. Um, but what I did is I started at the bottom with a brush. I used the West Systems epoxy, highly recommend it. Highly recommend getting the one with the pumps. Um, don't try to get the one and pour it yourself. It's super messy. Get the one with the pump, spend the extra money. Uh, that's also linked in my Amazon storefront. So check it out. Uh, so I started from the bottom, as you can see here, just paint it on. You have a working time of, I believe it is 11 or 12 minutes. No, it's eight minutes. Uh, which was plenty of time for me. I didn't have to rush through it or do anything crazy. So paint it on pretty good. Um, I started with the bottom and worked my way up. This is why it was easier to take that trim piece off because you can see I had already put the front back on. So if you have uh, damage specifically to the side, take as many trim pieces off as you can. That way you can kind of get in there. Um, but if you cannot get into it like this, um, I will show you how I got kind of deep into the camper in the places that I couldn't reach. So after I painted the epoxy on, you can see this is how I clamped it. This is why it is so important to have those deep throw clamps. You will thank yourself when you have them um, because you only have a short working time. So you need to have all of your materials ready to go ahead of time. So have your clamps ready before you start the epoxy. Lay out a pattern of wood that you think is going to work, that you know is going to work. Um, because you're not going to have much play time after you've already put and mixed your epoxy. So now that your bottom piece has dried, um, you want that to be completely dry, you can start working on the middle section. Now as you can see, I made these uh, two rails right here. There's one right here and there's one right here. Now that is basically just some scrap 2x4s that I had and I screwed a piece of, I think it was half inch wood to the, you can probably see it right there, to the actual 2x4 itself because it gives it a little gap and then I use those deep throat clamps. I can change colors here. There's a deep throat clamp right there, right there, there's one right there, and there's one up here that you can't see. But I used those clamps to clamp the actual 2x4s um, onto the camper. So that is going to give me a basically a good vantage point where I can start shoving wood in here and then wedging the wood in that way it brings the fiberglass onto the panel after I have my epoxy on. So let me erase all of this and we'll, I'll show you how I did that. Okay, maybe. Okay. No, come back to me. So this is where the tubing and the trim comes in and the syringes. So what I did was I got a 60 milliliter syringe, I filled it with epoxy and I basically attached tubing to a piece of plastic trim that I had. I 
just taped it on there. Um, I think I used HVAC tape just because that's what I had. And then I um, basically just stuck the whole thing in the wall of the camper and I squeezed the syringe and kind of slowly pulled it out at the same time. Um, so as you can see, I have the whole setup. I stick it in and you see I can get pretty far in there because my damage was pretty much where the window is. So I shoved it all the way in there. That way I can get epoxy all the way into the corners where I can't reach with my hands. And then I slowly pulled it back out and all the epoxy um, gravity works with it and moves down. So um, I have already epoxied the bottom part so I know it won't go any further than that. But basically just keep working the epoxy around um, and gravity will do its thing. And then I took my hands and I rubbed my hands kind of all over after maybe two syringes full. Um, I just rubbed my hands on the outside of the camper to kind of disperse the epoxy a little bit better. Now I actually did this in two sections, the middle part. So this was the first section that you just saw me do. Um, as you can see, I stuck some OSB between here and I had a whole bucket of scrap wood and I basically just stuck it in and made this OSB squeeze really tightly onto the camper to kind of clamp everything together. So that was the best way that I have found to do it. It turned out really good. So have all of your scraps ready before you mix your epoxy and get your syringes. Now, I didn't include the second video that I had, but I did the same process. You will need to reuse, um, not reuse, sorry. You need to get a new syringe and new tubing each time. Um, the epoxy will harden inside the tubing and the syringe. The syringes, if they're actually squeezed completely empty and you let them sit overnight, most of the time you can pop the epoxy out, but you won't be that dry in time for you to reuse it. So buy the, I think I bought a 10 pack of syringes. Buy the 10 pack or whatever it comes in because um, you will need them. So I did the same thing. I attached new tubing onto my piece of plastic trim and I squeezed it and worked it in. And then while squeezing the syringe, I slowly pulled it out. And that basically makes gravity do its thing and it mixes in really well. I stuck another piece of OSB up there. Now I did not wait six hours for this to dry. I just went ahead and did it because I wanted all of this to be dry for the next day. So let me show you why that is. Now for the top, I did something a little different. I went ahead and took my rails off the two by fours that I had. As you can see right here, I put a drop cloth on it because it will drip down. So just watch out for that. Now the top, I did the same thing with, syring with the syringes. I stuck the syringe all the way in with the tubing and pulled it out. Same thing, did it a couple times, maybe two or three times up top. And then I took some really big pieces of wood with my U-clamps, my deep throat clamps right here, um, and I clamped it that way. Um, just because I needed some more clamping points up here and it didn't really work with the two by fours because the two by fours were actually clamped here and I needed to epoxy that area. So this worked really well. Um, so you kind of have to do it in four or three different sections, the bottom, the middle, and then the top. After everything was epoxied and it was dry, I took my router and I routered out um, the wood and the holes for the window. Um, just be really careful with this because as you can see right there, um, it's really easy for the router to kind of dig into the foam. So you kind of have to just be really, really careful when you're doing it that way. Same thing for um, this hole right here. And I didn't have to be nearly as careful with this one because it actually had an aluminum frame around it. So this part was actually super easy to do. So after you have routed out your holes, um, it's basically just a matter of putting the trim pieces back on and putting the window back in. Uh, definitely scrape off the old butyl tape or um, foam tape that's around it if that's what your camper has. Put new butyl tape on it. Same with the window. Um, you know, reseal your window. So um, that that's pretty much it. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's kind of a lot of steps, but it's not really as hard as you think it is once you start getting into it and you start getting to the point where you can epoxy it. 
just remember that the epoxy is super, super messy. So put all of the plastic down, all of the drop cloths. Watch out for holes. Um, the mistake that I made was I did not put blue tape on the holes for the light. And so when I was epoxying, the epoxy came out through the holes and I had to get that off. So watch out for that. Just put some blue tape around it. That way the epoxy doesn't come in it. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. That took me, uh, it probably took me a total of maybe a week from start to finish. Um, once I got to the point where I could epoxy everything back together, if that's any kind of relative time frame and how long it might take you. Highly suggest doing it inside just because you do have to take a lot of things out. And if it rains, then that would not be good. Um, but if you guys have any questions, just feel free to comment. Um, definitely like and subscribe. If there's something that you're not sure of or you want me to do a video on, let me know and I can do that. Um, you can also find lots of resources on my website, fallenintocamping.com. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.